toll review, toll review, toll review. Toll review. I tried to make this video a couple weeks ago, but the whole thing ended up falling apart. Today we are talking about staple guns. Now I know this isn't the video that you guys necessarily want, but it's the video that you deserve. It's for your own good. My first furniture makeover was a chair. It was just a little chair where you could detach the seat and recover it pretty easily and put it back on and it was done. And this was a while ago. This was back when using burlap as upholstery was still popular. I'm talking like 2012, 2013, that's how far back this was. We've come a long way since then, but in those earlier projects, I used a handheld Stanley staple gun. This gun, I'm not talking bad about it. It is a great starter gun for upholstery projects, but it's not necessarily very efficient, especially if you're trying to get something done quickly. It's great for beginners. It's great for if you are just starting to learn upholstery, but as you get more skilled and you're starting to take on more complicated and advanced pieces, you definitely want to upgrade, which is what I did and I upgraded to this, an Aero PT50. Now this staple gun is actually backed by compressed air. So you need an air compressor and you need a hose. It was a little intimidating at first, but this was a great secondary staple staple gun to get. Super easy to use. All you had to do is squeeze here and that opened for you to put your staples and I still have some in there and you just hold down the grip and you close it and boom, you're done. Your staples are in there and you're ready to start going. I've completed some amazing projects with this gun. My favorite being this rug back chair that I did for Luckett's in 2019. But as time went on, I did notice some things that could be improved upon or that I was looking for in my next staple gun. One of which was the nose area. See how it is on the wider side? So getting down in those tight spaces, it just made it a little more difficult to access those spaces because of the wider nose. So that was something that I was going to be considering when I was going to upgrade again eventually. So something happened over Vlogmas where this staple gun just kind of stopped working for me. I think I need to do some oiling and just make sure that everything on it is operational. I believe it's still good and usable. I just need to look into that a little further. Kind of a blessing in disguise because it did force me to upgrade to this staple gun. I hope I say this right. Meaty. I'm pretty, <laughs> I cannot figure out how to say it. It's M-E-I-T-E. -E. From the YouTube video I saw from their channel, that is how the dude pronounced it. So this is a long nose staple gun. And it is great for getting into those really tight spaces on those more complicated projects. Now, when I ordered this, I did not realize at the time that I needed to get brand specific staplers for this gun. For the Stanley handheld stapler and the Aero PT50 air compressed stapler, I was just using Aero Universal Fit staples. No, these do not work on this. And that's kind of what's held up this entire video. So from Amazon, I ordered a box of the actual brand staples that work with this gun. And if you click on the description, there's actually a link down below. I have joined the Amazon affiliate program. You can order or see anything that I purchase off of Amazon that I use towards my business or this channel. Full disclosure, I do make a little bit of a commission anytime you purchase anything through my link. I promise not to add anything there that I do not personally use and I will remove anything that isn't up to my standard. So if you're interested in any of the products that you see in today's video, or if you want similar tags that I use for pricing my items, paint brushes, the chandelier that's in my booth, all the links are in my Amazon affiliate link down below. Okay, so let me show you the difference between the handheld stapler and the air compressed stapler. What I'm going to be using to show you the difference is actually this stool that I did back in Vlogmas. I still need to add the dust cover on the bottom and I had just been waiting for the new staple gun to come in. Sometimes the edges of these pieces can look a little rough. So we will cover up these edges along here with the dust cover. For dust covers, I actually use lawn fabric. I know it's weird, but it's a very, very, very similar fabric. It is a similar look. It probably just has a little less stretch. I've been using this for years. No one's ever been able to tell the difference. And so I'm just going to keep doing it because it is very cheap and you can get a bunch of it at one time. So I'm going to start this by showing you what the handheld Stanley stapler can accomplish. And so I've gone ahead and I folded over the edge of the lawn fabric slash dust cover and I'm just going to put a staple right there all right so we got one in so not bad right not bad at all now the thing I don't like about this is I have to kind of hold the staple gun steady so it doesn't move while also squeezing this now I just do not have really great grip strength and so it's hard for me to 
hold this, keep this steady, and grip and squeeze all at the same time. I'll show you guys another one right here. So pressing down, grip and squeezing. See, that was, I totally did not even mean to get it right there. That's completely out of alignment. Yeah, came out like no problem. So let's get the new staple gun hooked up to the air source. Place your gun. And I don't need to hold this to stabilize it. I can hold this and stabilize the piece instead. Squeeze the trigger. Boom. Look at the staple difference. Look how small that one is compared to this one. If you are a beginner, like I said, Stanley stapler, hand stapler is the one for you. You're most likely gonna make some mistakes and you want to be able to pull out staples that you made placement mistakes on. That's gonna be more difficult to get out than that one. This is the handheld staple. You can really get under it, boom, pop. Came out, no problem, right? Now let's do the air compressed staple. Really hard to get under that one. Ooh, almost, Ooh, this is why you wanna wear gloves. Really hard to get under it. And I've gotten it up enough where we can put the needle nose. Yep. Ooh. That took a sec. Finally got it out. That is why you probably want to start off with the Stanley handheld staple gun or the Aero PT50. You're going to be dealing with thicker staplers that are going to be easier to get out if you make a mistake. But as time goes on, you're going to want to upgrade to this. Now the dust cover is on and the piece is completed and ready for the booth. Now you might be able to find these staples with a wider head. That way you can actually get a flat head or staple remover underneath to get it up and out if you happen to put one in the wrong place. But I'm not entirely sure, so I will also be linking their website down below as well. That way you can check it out. You might have noticed when I was using the staple gun that I was also trying to hold the fabric as tight as I could while applying the staples. Doing that with a handheld stapler while also squeezing and trying to hold everything steady is very difficult. And that is why I recommend you use an air back staple gun after you get those first initial upholstery projects done and under your belt with a handheld. But that is not it for this video. We're going to be working on this little chair. This is probably the project that I've held on to the longest. I remember exactly where I picked this up from. I know that I picked it up my first year of being in this business. The plan was to have a seat cut out for here and then I was gonna reupholster the seat and somehow attach it. I, I don't know exactly what I was thinking. I just love the shape. I love the cane backing and I've just never been able to get rid of it. We collect projects that we just wish we could get to and wish we could accomplished, but they just are way too much work. It's not worth our time. We can probably classify this chair as one of those projects, but I just did not have the heart to get rid of it. I've wanted to see it come back to life. So today we're going to try and make that dream a reality. I'm not going to be cutting a wood form for this big empty hole. Instead, what I'm actually going to be doing is using webbing to create a basket weave pattern to use as a support before I add the cushion and the batting and then the fabric over top. Well, at least that's the plan. At one point, the seat of this chair actually had the same caning down here, but I guess over time it just broke and so somebody ripped it all off. I don't plan on getting into caning anytime soon. So as a final Hail Mary attempt to save this chair, we're going to try the webbing and the upholstery method. I think what I would like to do is actually flip the chair over and add the webbing to the inside lip around here. And that is how we'll get this whole project started. This is one of those moments where this narrow staple gun head is really, really useful when getting down into these tight corners. One tool that you can use when working with webbing is a webbing stretcher. A little difficult to use this tool in this situation because normally you would take the pointy part, you would stick into the webbing. This end would essentially press here and so you're making it nice and tight. But because we're putting it into the lip area instead of up here, I'm not really able to use this. So I'm just doing my best to stretch as much as possible, forcing it into the corner of the lip with the nose and hitting it with a staple. 
So I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get enough support there to put the cushion on top. Okay, so now that I have my webbing in place, we need to add our foam and then our batting over this chair to make it nice and cushiony. For only ever doing this one other time, I'm actually really happy with how I was able to do this. I have a piece of two inch foam that I have already cut. All we're gonna do is just take it and press it into the opening so that it's in there. Okay, perfect. Take the batting and lay it over top, even sides all the way around. I'm gonna staple this batting down onto this little raw wood gap that's right here where the caning used to be. It's the next day. This is water, ignore it. All that we have to do today is add the fabric and the welting around the edge of the seat. So for fabric, I have black linen. I know that it's not necessarily the most exciting fabric, but we're working with a piece that has a lot of decorative lines and a lot of detail, so we don't want to go too crazy with a wild pattern. I wish I had a cool color to put on this, but I have two pieces of black linen that I cut. I was worried that the batting would show through the black if I pulled it too tight, so I'm layering it up. We're going to do exactly like what we did when applying the batting. We're going to start from the back, then go to the front, then side to side and then just work our way around until the fabric is nice and secure and all stapled in. One thing I'm noticing with this particular staple gun is that the power behind it is so strong that when I hit the trigger, sometimes a staple doesn't necessarily come out, but the power and the compression will actually cause the fabric to rip just from the punch that's giving when it's trying to shoot a staple out. Now, if you used the staple gun before, you know that sometimes that happens. Sometimes you hit the trigger and it does the punch, but no staple actually comes out. Could just be that the air compressor is low on air and that it needs to refill. Just something to consider when using this particular staple gun. The punch on it is so strong that if your fabric is too thin, it'll probably rip pretty easily. You probably want to only use this on heavier fabrics or if you're doubling up your fabric. I like the gun so far, but I just want to give you that information. I got all the fabric stapled on, and now we just need to trim all the excess. When I was stapling everything down, at one point I accidentally pulled the trigger a little too early back here and so I completely missed the line that I was stapling in and the punch on it was so hard gonna really end up struggling trying to get the staple out of this spot I mean it went down pretty deep that's how strong and powerful this staple gun is which is great right but also again if you make a mistake it's gonna be really difficult to <laughs> to pull out the staple once it's in it's almost so deep that it would probably cause more damage for me to pull it out than it would for me to just leave it there. So again, if you're gonna get the staple gun, just be very aware that it, it packs a punch. It actually looks pretty good, I'm, I'm happy with it. Next step is adding our double welting. With double welting, it takes a special sewing pressure foot for your machine. I've included that also in the Amazon affiliate link down below. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start here at the back and we're gonna take some hot glue and wrap it all the way around so that we can get a nice clean edge on this seat. is done. I'm happy with how it turned out. I probably could have gone with a louder fabric, like something really crazy and floral and bright. I just really didn't want it to compete with everything that the frame has going on. I figured it's a busier frame. Let's go with a very understated fabric to really just allow that to shine. I can't help but think if you went crazier on the fabric choice, that it would really just make the whole chair just go just wow. If I had like a bright pink velvet or even like a baby pink velvet, or like a robin's egg blue velvet. That would have been like really nice. But this is what I have right now and I'm going to take it to my booth. If it sells, great. You know, if it sits for a long time and I happen to get my hands on some velvet, then we'll reconsider reupholstering this beautiful thing. But that might be a little difficult just because with this staple gun, I mean, 
those staples are in there and they will be a pill to dig out. My overall review of this staple gun, I'm avoiding saying the name because I truly don't know how it's pronounced, Meaty. I that's how the dude said it. I'll put their channel down below with the specific video that I found of him saying it. I'll put it down below. You guys be the judge and let me know if I'm saying it wrong. I probably am. I'm terrible at pronunciation. Overall, this is a great staple gun. It's got a lot of punch. I love the needle nose. It really is a game changer when it, you need to get into those tight spaces to place a staple. My only criticism, I noticed a couple times when I was hooking it up to the compressed air that even if my finger wasn't on the trigger, it would just fire a staple out of nowhere. Just, that's just how pressurized that air is. It just forces one through. I don't think I've ever experienced that issue with the Aero PT-50 staple gun. It's just something I notice every time I hook this one up, a random staple would come flying out like a bat out of hell. Just to review, the Stanley handheld stapler is great if you are just getting into upholstery projects. If I was brand new to this, I would go out and get myself one and I would just practice on really simple pieces. Pieces where you can just unscrew the seat of a chair, flip it over, add your fabric, staple it on, and that's it, you're good, you're done. Practice with a handheld Stanley stapler first. Next, you wanna upgrade to the Aero PT-50. This is great if you are getting a little more experience, you wanna move a little quicker, you're getting into more complicated pieces. You'll also have to get an air hose and a air compressor. And it's a little bit of a mental hump if you've never worked with those before, but trust me, once you watch a YouTube video or two about how those work and how you hook them up, You'll get it, you'll be fine, you'll be able to do it every time you go to use this piece. The next staple gun that you wanna upgrade to is a long nose. This is the one I decided on. I like it so far. I'll let you guys know if that changes in the future, but I do love the long nose. I'm 100% satisfied with this purchase. If you guys have any recommendations on staple guns that you have used in the past, please leave them down below in the comment section. Also, please remember if you see something in this video that you would like to purchase, my affiliate links are down below. I have my Amazon Influencer Affiliate Link store, along with the individual affiliate links for these three staple guns down below as well. Once again, full disclosure, I do make a commission if you happen to purchase through my affiliate link. Thank you if you do. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please remember to hit the like button and to subscribe. Also hit the bell notification, that way you can be notified for whenever I post a new video. And please follow me at Amanda's Mercantile on Instagram, that way you can see anything that I do behind the scenes. I'll see you guys next week, bye. Side, side, and then just work our way away. And then just work our way away. Wow, just wow.